Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is uh, additional video for the uh, class on Monday, uh, 19 September. Okay, so we are going to continue our subject on inequality. Okay, so on the previous class, we have arrived at this inequality. So if you have a linear equation in your inequality, uh, basically what you are doing is uh, you are going to solve uh, as usual and see that what we can do is we just uh, make the all the variables on the left side or on one side and then the numbers or constant will be in on the, on the right side. And then we just simplify it and we can confirm through line numbers. Okay? And then we also have, if we are going to have, uh, for example, this case here, whenever you multiply the equation with negative, which means that we are going to affect this uh, inequality, okay? So uh, less than multiply with negative, it become, become the greater than, okay? And you can also check with the uh, line numbers. And if you have this, uh, you, you actually have two equations. This is the first one and this is the second one. So we are going to, if we move the middle one to the left and the right, we are going to do at this exactly the same time. Or if you would like, if you'd like, this is also, you can actually make it two. So first is this and second is this. Well, the result should be the same, should be the same. The conclusion should be the same. Then you can go uh, confirming through the line numbers. Okay, I think that's just a little bit review. Okay, so what's next? Next thing is we have uh, quadratic inequality. Okay, okay basically, we will have uh, equations that is quadratic, but it has an inequality. So for example, let me just directly give example. Okay, we have this. Okay. okay, if you want to solve this, you can solve this first and pause the video to see your answer. And then after you find your answer, you can try to confirm the answer with me. Okay, okay, let's move on. Now, the idea behind of this is basically what you're going to do is make, make this equation as your regular quadratic equations and and find the factors if you can find the factors okay find the roots if you can find the roots okay so basically we are going to make it into the same side all the equations and this will be a less equal zero so basically what this going to say for us okay this is actually all this, okay, we have some possibility of x that is less or equal zero, and that is x that we want, right? So we are going to find this x. First is basically, probably we can factorize this. I think this is how to factors, right? You can also write this. And you will have the factors is x equal 2 and x equal 3, okay? Uh, for our computations, we don't really care for, for now what this is about, okay? What we are looking for is just the, the, the roots or this number 2 and 3. And the next thing we are going to apply is we apply the line number. So we are going to have two, we are going to have three. Okay, and then we are going to check. Okay, we are going to check all the interval that is between these two, three. Okay, so we can check zero if you want, check zero. So put zero on the equations. If you put zero here, it will be minus and minus, so it will be a positive. Okay, so it will be a positive if we take a zero. And also, uh, we could also check maybe in between two and three, we have 
maybe 5 over 2 it's it's 2.5 if you make sure so 5 over 2 we check or 2.5 we check 2.5 let me erase this okay, 2.5 this will be a positive this will be a negative so it will be a negative so this will be negative right and then maybe the other one is 4 let's just check 4 so 4 let me erase this okay so four, four, it's all positive, right? It's all positive. Okay, so after we got this, then what is the question really is? The question really is we are going to find, let me, let me erase this for, for a moment. And this also we are need we need to find all this right that is equal zero or less zero which means that these are our last zero and how to make it zero then we need to include this two and three so interval okay so the solution will be if you want to write as this this is also uh, sorry this is also okay or we can just write two three okay because at this interval the interval makes the equation negative and at the end point two and three the equation is zero which which are our goals okay that's the quadratic inequality so basically basically what you're going to find is first solve as a regular quadratic find the root check the interval okay just this tree okay and somehow somehow still in the quadratic inequality uh, we will have a uh, repeated factors we might have repeated factor but this is not really a problem what is repeated factors? Let me just give you an example. Repeated factor is when you have something like this. So, so this is called a repeat, repetition. It's, it's called a repeated factor. So it's a repeated factor. But the idea is still the same. Idea is still the same. And from this equation, we directly get the, uh, the root that uh, sorry the root is 0 1 and 3 and we don't really care much on this for now we, we just care on drawing the line number and then 0 let's say 1 and 3 right and then we check okay we check so first maybe we check negative 1 negative one here negative one here it's become positive negative 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 it's a positive so this is positive and then check another one check half in between zero and one this is positive positive negative so it's negative this is negative and then check again one and three maybe we have two we check two it's positive positive and negative negative positive it's negative right and check maybe four here to just make sure four is all positive so we are having this all this stuff that is supposed to be negative but careful be careful now after we make this line we check that it should not be include zero at this uh, 
line equations, right? If you if you see this inequality, so this should be giving some gap there because at x equal one, the equations become zero. Okay, so this is just to say that the interval of solution. Okay, so the solution is zero one and we are not including this one, uh, 0, 1, and 3. We, not, we are not including because they are making zeros, right? So we are take this bracket like that and then include both intervals, okay? So careful. Whenever you deal with something like this, probably you are tempted to solve this as uh, 0, 3, like that. But this is will be wrong and okay, this is will be wrong so careful on the inequality here okay well if, if the question has the equal maybe maybe we could we could answer and maybe we could include the point as well okay, but but this is the the solutions okay this is solutions okay well we're still confused about this we, we, we might have some exercise but maybe later okay And this is supposed to be not included, not included, not included. Okay. okay, now the next part will be inequality, inequality involving a quotient. So let me give you an example. 1 plus x over 1 minus x greater than e or equal 1. All right. What should we do now? Okay, be careful. Okay, be careful. I know some of you are thinking, well, this is practically just cross multiply with this, right? Can we do that? Can we do that? Okay. First, first, every step in math, we need to know the reason why we are going to do that. If we attempted to cross multiply this, let me write it with red color here. We, it, uh, let me write, it doesn't work. Because we don't know 1 minus x is positive or negative. Okay? And because we don't know it's positive or negative, then there will be a problem with this inequality. Well, with, well it, 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 when it's negative and you want to make it positive, you need to multiply with negative, then it will be change the inequality and the answer will be very different okay it will be very different so the safest way to solve this the safest way to solve this is just moving to one side okay? and then we try to simplify using a common denominator okay so we are going to have ah sorry minus one like that and greater equals zero and then let's let's try to to simplify. So simplify, or let me let me let me simplify step by step. So you you will see the method. Okay. So this will be one minus x, one minus x. Okay. I will I will make it the same denominator. And then this is one minus x. And then careful, careful. Imagine this is having a bracket like that, okay? So this will be 1 plus x minus 1 plus x, okay? Okay, get it? And then this will be canceling 1 there, and then we'll have uh, 2x over 1 minus x. Okay. 
Okay, I think this will be already simplified. So, how to solve then? Well, we see that we have 2x on the top and 1 minus x on the bottom, the denominator. Then we can make some uh, interval to make the equation defined on its domain, right? So we are, we are going to consider domain. So every time we have a rational, rational equation, we need to consider its domain. Okay. So first, x is the one that makes zero, right? So x should be equal to zero okay, in, in one side. Because when x is zero, and it, the, the equation can be true, right? The other thing is when 1 minus x, should not be equal to zero. Should not be equal to zero. Or let me write here like that. Or x is not equal to one. And let's let's take this zero and one as our roots in line number. Let's write zero and one like that. So our idea is finding the intervals when we look at these equations when we put our numbers it should be positive or equal zero that will be our goals so check our numbers negative one so check with negative one we get negative on the top and we got a positive on the bottom right one minus minus one is positive so we get negative so we have a negative here and then after that, maybe we check half, okay? On the top will be a positive, on the bottom is also positive. So this is probably true. And then we try another number two, we get positive and negative, so we have a negative. So probably it's between zero and one, but we need to make sure what should we what should we write as in our solutions so for zero we need to include zero because it has equal signs or inequality right so we are going to have a close interval there but for one we are not including one because it's make the equations undefined so we are going to make an open interval like that so solution solution will become including zero and until one but not including one okay so this is solutions like that if you want to make the line number different color it's just okay but I, i'm preferring using this like when you have the interval uh using this like something like that okay this is the one you are looking for it can be negative and positive depends on the questions okay i hope you get the uh the idea okay i hope i think last part on the um inequality the last part okay if you feel you want to review this you can rewind and watch from the beginning about the quadratic um when you have the uh the repeated factors is not really um, affecting your calculation whatsoever and then the quotient okay so involving quotient remember you will need you need to consider domain okay you need to consider its domain okay all right now last part here in the inequality is the absolute value Okay, now let me give you all the uh, conditions, okay, all the conditions. The first is absolute value of x less a constant. We can write in a, in a, in the form that has a negative c and positive c, which means that it's a distance with the, um, with the length of c. Okay. 
So distance of x is equal to c. So in, in the line number, this will be this will be the the form second I think this is should be very intuitive but let me, let me just write this okay so that you can see the difference okay, and then this will be included And the third one is when we have a uh, greater. So this will be this or C less than X or X greater C. That's also okay. And then the variation is when we have the equal sign. We just add the equal. Okay. I think it should be understood very well so practically saying that the the absolute value of x it can be having x or negative x right so it's, it's also true for its its inequality okay so whenever you have like absolute value of x is less than c you could see that this is actually actually having the negative x and x is they are uh, going to have a similar uh, or if we would like to to imagine that x is less than c okay so this will be equal to x greater negative c so we could write this as x less than c but but the or negative c is less than x okay that is from from this to uh approach okay and the same thing when we have greater c this means that uh, practically speaking this is what we have okay and then we make it to multiply with negative so we have this sorry okay that's why we have uh, it's becoming become becoming uh, two ways going to the right and going to the left okay okay I hope getting the absolute value is not too complicated okay okay for example solve this is example solve the um, absolute value x minus 5 or less than 2 so first first this is we are going to rewrite well it's it's up to you okay maybe if you're not familiar with the absolute value we can write one by one first thing is we write the positive terms and we write the negative term and both we can solve each okay but if you are familiar with this and we can just go around and then make this becomes this and this and i think this will be very quick
from that our So when we have it, we have this, we can make it into two ways. First is the positive. We can, we can solve this first. And then we can make the negative form or we could just write the, this 3x plus 2 and then less equal negative 4. Okay. Okay, the solutions will be this two. Or if you would like to to measure the uh, this is negative two and maybe this is uh, two over three and this will be the the solutions or if you would like to write uh, completely with the interval. We need to input the infinity if you would like to write. Okay. That's the solution. Good solution. Okay. Okay. I think that's for the inequality. Okay, let's continue our study. So after inequality, what I would like you to explain now is uh, the coordinate plane. Okay, so coordinate plane. Graphs. And uh, circles. Of course, we are going to start with the basic one. Okay. So for coordinate plane, uh, we're going to start with the name. Okay, we usually say that uh, the alternate name is the Cartesian, right? The Cartesian. So whenever you find yourself into this this uh, terms, uh, which is called the coordinate plane or Cartesian plane, this is practically okay. Practically, we say that we have a two axis, okay, like this. We see, we usually we name this axis as Y, this one as X. And another name that is actually similar with this also, we can call this as a, a rectangular plane. So basically the name is came from because uh, all the points within this Cartesian plane or rectangular plane, we can make a rectangle out of these points. So if we make all the points possible let's say we have a different unit one so let's say we have uh, zero and then one and then two and then something also here we add we add also in the y-axis if you connect all this point with all the uh, all the possibility we can see that we we might have uh, a rectangular shape out of this um, two axes x and y. For example, let's say we are going to have this line here and this line here and also this line here. Well, it's not really proportional. Let me move around here. Well, my drawing's not really proportional but it's supposed to be all the points that makes out from this um, cutout will be a, having a rectangular so so this is what we, we call this also a rectangular plane this is just um so you do this for all the possible uh possible cutout and we are going to see a rectangular shape so for example we can say that at this point here we have uh 
at this point here one two okay and at this point here we have uh, negative two one and so on and so forth you can write all the points coordinates as long as it is according to the uh, to the plane okay and then another thing about this coordinate plane is we are going to name the coordinates or to name the space within this coordinate we have four spaces we have four spaces so this is y this is x usually we name from this we say the, this is the, the first space or first quadrants that's the, the, the official names the quadrants let me write the quadrants this is one two is here three is this one four is this okay You will know why we name this quadrant as um, as a um, counterclockwise because it will relate to the the polar coordinate that we are going to learn later on in in uh, maybe after several chapters. Okay, and of course, if we look back this this rectangular. Uh, rectangular plane here if you want to to mention line for example if we make this line this red one is let's say this is x equal negative one so we have we can also make a line but what's happened if we have uh, let's say uh, x greater equal zero so that means we have a line on x equal zero let's say this is x equal zero but this should be greater also than zero. So this will be, we can um, put a highlight or a color in here that to to to, to notify that this is also uh, belongs to x greater or equal zero. Okay. Okay, that's the coordinate, and the the other thing um, that I I I think you need to also wear off is the distance okay the distance so let's say we have we have um let's say just x1 and we have x2 around here And we have y1 here and y2 around here okay and we define two points we define two points here point a which is x1 y1 and point c is here oh should be x first sorry x2 y1 and one more point here is B. This is X2, Y2. Okay. Now, oh, sorry. If we would like to know if we have this, let me move this A goes down here. Okay, from this triangle ABC, we are going to to know the, let's say we are going to evaluate this D, or, or we say the distance from point A to point B, okay? So according to this triangle, and of course you are familiar with, then we could say let me let me just make um, all the so we know that this length is x2 minus x1 right and this length is y2 minus y1 and of course we are going to just evaluate the distance right the distance we are um, the particular 
um, value that we want is the distance. So we need to make it with the absolute value. So the distance through this triangle, of course, from, let me write, we, we know the Pythagorean, and I hope you already also familiar with, right? So I don't think we need to explain. So according to Pythagorean theorem, this will be equal to square root of the x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Or we could just simply say x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Or, or we can just simply say this is delta x squared plus delta y squared. Okay. So this is the distance formula, okay? the distance formula that probably will be very helpful in our um, study on math, especially calculus later. When you learn calculus, you, you, will, you will familiarize with, with this distance formula. Okay, I don't think we need to have example. I think it's, it's okay. Another thing on this mid uh, in this distance formula, within this point here, maybe let me let me copy all this stuff. Let me copy all this. Copy and make it another one below here, and make it a little bit smaller, and erase this D. And then let's put on another point in the middle of this distance, okay? Let's say this is M. So another way we have let me erase all the distance here and also here. Let me just erase for a while. Let me put C. Or let me just erase all the, the ABC and make another one. So our, our goal now, we are going to uh, define this M, okay, this point M. So let's define M and let's just make some dash like that and from there we take another triangle and also another triangle here this is to show you that this m is really at the middle of the uh, red line okay so we say we could say that this is equal okay and let's say this is a and b b is x2 y2 a is x1 y1 okay and let's say we have a b is here that is right angle this also another one q here is also right right angle and the distance let's just say that this is an, an x according to this middle point here the midpoint so the distance from here through here is just x2 minus x and this one is x minus x1 okay the distance this is to show that the point of m is really at the middle middle of the line a b okay so it's it's called the midpoint now from this tr two triangles we could say that the midpoint midpoint of line A and B is x1 ah sorry plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2 okay so practically it's 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 just to say that it's really on the middle, and so you, that's why we need to define by two. Okay, I hope that's help. Okay, 
that's the uh, distance and the midpoint okay okay let me continue to the next page uh, it's, it's supposed to be graphing the uh, the equation but I think I will just skip some parts uh, because I believe you already know how to do that so basically plot points um, using tables um, I believe that's uh, not too complicated right should be should be easy to follow but the, the important concept on the uh, graphing graphing graphs is the intercepts okay, the intercepts this is I believe um, it, it, it's quite important because intercept means that you know that the um, the graph will crossing either X or Y or both axes okay so let me let me just copy the things on here so of course we start with the X intercepts which means that we are going to see the points that cross by our curve this is our curves here the, the, the first one here is our curves so we have one two three for example so we what 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 is the axis intercept practically this is axis intercept one two three that's our axis intercept in, in this picture okay, in this picture here so how to find them just the set thing the y equals zero because at y equals zero we see that precisely we are going to see all these three points all came together right okay another another way is the y intercept well that is how we can find uh, the curve that is going to crossing the uh, y-axis so basically that is when x equals zero so so within this x or y intercept you will we will see how the the um, the curve behave and when we learn about functions you know how to find them okay and 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 not all functions have the um, all x on y intercept some maybe only x intercept some maybe only y intercept and maybe there's no intercept at all it, it could be it could be it depends on on how the um, the characteristic of the curve okay so that's the intercepts okay okay uh, I think we can move to To the circles get to the circles so so far we discuss um, the, the graph the coordinate plane the um, plotting the graphs I'm still keeping off that but I think you, you guys already know and also the uh, the intercepts So by definitions, what is a circle? So let me just go by and start with the um, picture. Start with this picture here. Let's say this, the red curve, the red line, or yeah, the red circle here is our circle representations, which means that uh, if we look at the uh, P and C, our, our the C will be the center. This will be the center, and P is the point on our curve or our circle. Okay. So, if we are going to move P anywhere on the circle, the distance from the center to that P is always the same, which is the constant R, the radius. Okay. So, we can start with, to, to begin our understanding on the circle, we could start from, take this, uh, let me make it blue, let's just make this as a, a triangle, okay? And from here, we know all the points that um, we are going to 
incorporate okay. so we know that from this differences in x and y we could find the distance so the distance r r is a distance distance or let me make it a little bit more clear distance from p or from c from c to p right and from the distance formula we get that the r is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared or if we take the square both sides we could have and let me just move out r to the right side okay now this is what we call an equation of circle with uh, center hq oh hk sorry hk hk and a radius equal r okay so this is hk here and of course from these equations at zero zero then equation of circle has become r squared or let me x squared plus y squared is r squared so these two are the basic for the circle the first one we call this as a standard form this one the circle centered at origin or at zero zero okay so basically what we have here is we can predict how the circle will be on our graphs so for example if we say x squared plus y squared equal nine let's say then we know that this r will be three and the center will be zero zero so we could draw that easily let's say we have uh one two three one two three one two three one two three and zero zero s at the origin so we could just take the okay now i i'm i i was helped by the uh, the software to make it curvier so but but i think you could also do with your paper if you want maybe using some points to, to draw the circle okay easy and if we have the let's say uh, x minus 2 squared uh, plus y plus 1 squared let's say we have this equal 25. now based on what we have at the standard form we need to have the hk as our center so this is the center so center is 2 negative 1 so centered at 2 negative 1 and r is equal 5 okay now how to draw that basically this is just to say that when you have a circle with radius 5, you just move out the circle and the center will be on 2, negative 1. So let's say 2, negative 1 is around here. So this will be your um, new center. So this is a center. Okay. Uh, sorry. 1. will be the circle so one two three four five so probably probably around here yeah 
uh, not really good, but let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay, I think it's, it's quite at the middle. So that's that's our our uh, circle with the centered at at uh, two negative one. Well, I don't, I'm, 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 I, I, I don't really uh, think that drawing proportionally in paper, um, well, it's sometimes helping, but sometimes not really. As long as you consistent on making these equations and know how to, uh, to make visuals out of this formula, I think um, that should be okay. It should be, should be fine. Okay, now another way or another problem that came out from this equation of circle, <coughs> we might have questions like a fine equation of circle with r equal three centered centered at two negative five. But I think this is also can be easily uh, taught as um, using the standard formula. So x minus two squared because from from this h k right, and then plus y plus five squared and then equal nine. That's pretty. And then the way we draw it will be the same with this one. So we have a circle with radius three, and then we move to uh, to negative five, and centered at that point. Okay. And maybe another questions that I might um, ask in, in in the questions. Um, find uh, equation of circle that the points P one eight and Q five negative six as the endpoints of diameter diameter okay so diameter is 2r so practically speaking this p and q will be the diameter and the center will be the, the middle point okay the middle point so basically we need to find the middle point so middle point will be our radius, right? So we can take this M and this middle point is, or let me just write directly. And then eight minus six divided by two. This will be going to be three, one. That will be our new center. Now the distance formula in the distance formula then you could find from this three one this three one eight to either one eight or five negative six so r squared will be three minus one let's say we have this two okay so three minus one squared plus one minus eight squared so three minus one is two is four. Four plus 49 is 53. So we are going to have this, the standard formula for the circle. Okay. And then um, I think we can try to draw also okay, but uh, yeah, I think the radius is a little bit not really a good number if you if you square with this, but but I think we can just approximate that. Okay. But let's say let's say we are going to expand this form. Okay, expand this form. Okay. So let me copy this. This is another way also to write the equations. Okay. So aside from this standard form, we could expand the form 
then let's just expand this form and try to find the with quadratic equations. Okay, and then we have x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 2y and then all the things going to the, 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 the constant going to the right, it will be 43. So sometimes you, you, are, you are given by this expansion and then it's asking uh, the center, uh, the radius, and how do we get that? We need to go here, make the um, standard form. Okay? Let, me, let me give you an example, okay? another, another example. So let's say we have x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 6y plus 7 equal to 0. So suppose that the question asking uh, proof that this is a circle, find the center and then find the radius. So the, so the first thing we, we are going to, to, to make out is remember that we have the the complete the square in the quadratic equation that is what we are going to do so we are going to complete the square for x and complete the square for y okay so the idea is first is grouping x and y okay so x squared plus 2x okay, yeah, let's just start with that and to help out just make some brackets and make some space on the right side of 2x and then this one will be the y and also give spaces there bra bracket like that and the other side will be the constant okay okay let's let's uh let's complete the square complete the square Or x and y right okay so first we are going to plus one for this x because it's plus one we need to also plus one here okay. and plus nine this one and also plus nine to complete the square how we get one and nine is basically from the middle here divided by two and then squared this one divided by two three three squared is nine okay or um, maybe the logic is what you need to plus so so what constant you are going to plus here so that when you factorize this it will be a complete factorizations of a factor for example this x squared plus two x plus one becomes x plus one squared Okay, and this y squared minus 6y plus 9 is become y plus 3 squared. Or it's it's minus, sorry. It's minus because it's minus 6. And then the constant will be 3. So this is just to say that, that the center, the center is negative 1, 3 and radius is square root of 3. Remember, this, the radius should be positive. Although it's square root from 3, but because it's a distance, we need to have a positive radius. Okay, okay that's the circle. Okay, another aspect within the graphing or curve is symmetry. Okay, symmetry. Now, if we consider, um, let's just take a simple, simple x squared as we usually draw. Okay. 
Okay, let's say this is um, y equal x squared. Okay. And suppose that we have an um, some x here. Okay. And it will be uh, having a coordinate at the curve with with, with some y, for, for example, just take some, some random. But this is going to be the same with the other way around, the other sides of the y-axis. We have negative x, in which they, they also give the same results y. So this, this, this similar distance that is going to be uh, around here, we are having the same distance. So we call this symmetry with respect to y-axis. So we call this symmetry with respect to y-axis. Okay, so if we are going to elaborate more, let me just copy and give you the types of symmetry. We are going to have at least three symmetry. Okay. So first is symmetry with respect to x-axis in which you are going to see the curve, they will have the same distance from some point on the uh, curve to the x-axis and through the x-axis through the other curve as well and it's equal, equal distance. Okay. And the other one is respect, with respect to y-axis in which we already discussed before. And the last one is uh, we are going to have a symmetry with respect to the origin. So what does it mean is we are going to have the <coughs> the point that we are going to um, to to observe is this origin. Okay. So the distance, okay, the distance is the same. The distance is the same from zero to some x here and from zero to negative x here is also the same so we say uh it's symmetry or we could we could see the test okay if we have the uh, with uh symmetry with respect to x axis we can replace y by negative y and the result should be equivalent to the original equation or if we replace x by negative x, it will be equivalent to the original equation. For example, we have y equal x squared as before. Okay. If we plug in negative x inside this equation, it's the same. Same thing, right? Well, this one may be x equal y squared. Same thing, right? And this last one, the last one, if we replace x with negative x and y with negative y, it should be resulting with equal, equal, uh, equal distance. For example, maybe the cubic, if we can replace this, we are getting the same result as the original one. Right? Okay. Well, that's the, uh, the symmetry, symmetry. Okay. 
Okay, let's continue. So this will be, I think, last part on the first chapter for the fundamentals of basic of math. So the last one should be the uh, about the lines. So lines, basically, uh, if we have a point like in the coordinate, and if we want to uh, combine all this dot or the, all this this point, what we get is line structure, right? Line structure. Okay, so we know that as, um, as our uh, basic knowledge, but to find the uh, the property of the lines, okay, we usually describe in terms of the slope. Slope of a line. But what is a slope? Slope is related to the steepness. Okay. So, because the line depends on how the uh, the or, or the equation is depend on how the line is inclined, so the slope will be very important to describe those lines. Okay. What is a slope? Slope is steepness. And it is described by as a general in general it's rise over run. So basically if you have a, some some inclined structure like this, if you wanted to know how how much the steepness is or what is the slope of this uh, line, then this will be the rise over run. So we know the ratio, it's ratio of steepness. And that will be the idea of the slope, okay? Or if we just look on our uh, axis, this is just the ratio between some y here divided by x, okay? And we can also remember some of trigonometry lesson that this is actually our tangent if we have an angle and this will relate to what we have in calculus the tangent line and so on and so forth but let's just stick with the slope in in our sense here okay so we have this and we are going to to let's say define the point defining the point uh, Maybe we define, let, let's just make more, uh, let me just describe this. Okay, so let's just take some point here, some point here, and let's make a triangle around here. Okay, I say that's the point. So let's say we have um, x1, y1, and this will be x2, y2, okay? And this will be um, x2, y1, okay? Now the slope, then, we usually write as m, or we can also say as a gradient. So the slope that passed through point, let's say A and point B, rise over run is equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Or simply we just focus on there is a delta y here and delta x here. We say also this M should be non vertical line. Because if we have a vertical line, okay, or let me write here, vertical line is not defined. Why? Because it goes, but the nomin or the nominator will be zero. That's why later on we 
know the concept of asymptote, but that will be very uh, in the different sections. So this is the slope, and let me check the picture. Uh, okay, I think we can. We can. Let me crop this. Just focus on. Okay. okay. Now from this line, because we can make many many points. Okay. As long as it is on the line, on this red line here, we could describe many many delta y and delta x. So we have a delta y or delta x here, delta y here delta x here, delta y here, and all those have the same ratio, the same gradient, the same slope, right? Okay, so we could write down with different, different point as long or as much as you want, okay? So that's the idea. So whenever or, or wherever you pinpoint your locations, as long as it is on the same line, then your slope will be the same. Okay, that's the, the, the idea. And according to how the slope behave, okay, the slope behave, they it can behave like this. For example, we call this a positive slope. So the slope should be positive, okay. And and of course, from what we know from this. Uh, the difference in, in each distance for this rise and run, the distance, this distance is uh, positive, okay? But when we have, for example, we have this, this become a negative slope. Okay, this is because We are going to to um, to observe. Let's just observe the delta. The delta, then, for example, um, let's say maybe taking some context here. Uh, let's say this is one. Or negative one, sorry, negative one and three. Okay, I say that's the idea. Or maybe in here, let me just take this point here to make it short. Maybe this is four, negative one. Okay. Okay. So. So four or even the delta y is three and negative one. Three minus minus one and negative one, negative four. This will be four, negative five, right? For example. Well, anyway, that's the positive slope and negative slope, okay? And we, we are going to talk more on this positive negative, um, I think, later on, and also in the in calculus, probably. And we, we have the zero slope. So it's like uh, like how you are going to uh, rotate your slope. Okay, so you rotate the positive, and then going it, it's it's going to turn, it's going to turn. Based on 
um, clockwise and before it it goes negative it will be a zero like this okay, we have a zero slope and another this is no slope or this is a vertical line which has no slope because it's undefined And another thing from this um, slope slope type, let's say the slope type, we can also make a point slope point slope form of line equation. So say an equation of the line that pass through point and has slope let's say slope m right is equal Now, how to make this logical or visualize? Okay. So we could just take some random line. Let's just say to make it easy, let's say this has the, the positive slope like this. And we take some point, point here, let's say P1 and this is P. Let's say P1 is already exact X1, Y1, where P we can move P as much as we want like so we can just take it as our variable x y okay now again we have the delta the delta or will we say here the y minus y1 this is x minus x1 so we say that from here the slope or the gradient will be y minus one one, one defined x minus x1 and these expressions when we turn on this line equations becomes very very important expressions when we have a point okay we have a point which indicated by this y1 and x1 and if we know the gradient or the slope then we can make the line equation directly from the point x1 y1 with the gradient m okay it's very very helpful and it will be very important in the uh, calculus one, especially when we deal with the tangent line. Another way to describe the line equations, the uh, the formula that is actually quite quite similar, okay, quite similar. So, if okay, if the line intercepts some point or a point let's say the point that is intercepting is 0 b then we can just changing x this is x1 this is y1 okay so x1 we can describe as uh, 0 so y minus b as according to this right y minus b equal m and then x minus 0 or you can just write mx plus b. This is another standard form in line equations. So the basic is pretty much the same. Okay, pretty much the same. And how we are going to use these two is depends on our situations. And and basically these two we can use both for most cases. Okay. And in general, in general, because we now deal with this linear equation, we could say that the graph, the graph itself, if we could describe in terms of uh, y x, 
as a linear equation. So the graph of every linear equation. Let's say we have some constant A, B, and C equal zero, and A, B uh, uh, not zero, both of them not zero. Okay. Then the graph of every linear equations, this equations, is a line. Okay. So every time we have this kind of. Uh, structure and this is a line equations so every line is the graph of linear equation of course okay, of course now if we are given for example if you are given uh, let me just make some some example if you are given 2x minus 3y minus 12 equals 0 so if you want to make line equation out of this linear one okay how do we make our line okay so first first we can take the intercepts how we can make x equal zero or y equal zero and we find the intercept so let's say we have x equal zero so when x equals zero this will be 3y equal negative 12 or y is negative 4 so this is the y intercept and when y equals 0, then uh, x or 2x will be equal to 12. Or x is equal to 6. And this is the intercept. This 2 is intercept. So the, practically, the line will, 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 uh, will be drawn on this point. So point um, 0, negative 4, and point 6, 0. And from, from here, from here, of course, you can just draw directly. Okay, if you would like to draw directly with this two point, we 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 can do that also, or or this is first way, or we can draw uh, through the um, the slope. Okay, so we can draw through the slope. Let's say we have this. Or let me let me just. Uh, take this into the next page so that you can have much more clear uh, clear picture okay let's say that okay so the idea to make this slope is just to make out our structure like this okay so basically we are going to well start with just exchanging positions right and then maybe multiply with the negative to make to make it to make the structure clear and we get we get this so this means that at m equal 2 over 3 okay the y intercept is B equal negative four. Okay. Well, this is actually quite true because we already know that this will be also crossing the same point. So yeah, that's that's okay. And this two over three, this two over three, is our uh, ratio. From, from our triangle. So if, if, you, if you draw, for example, if you draw, maybe draw the, the first solutions first, okay? Or maybe I will draw in the same picture. So let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six, zero. And then one, two, three, four, four is here. So we are going to connecting these two point and that's your line equations okay or or we can make sure that we can take this triangle okay? and then we can take 
So if you draw really, really good, proportional, you will see that this is going to be 2 over 3. Or maybe if you want to make it a little bit bigger, maybe up until here, This should put it 2 over 3. Okay. Well, if you draw proportionally, you will see the, um, the structure. Okay. Now, another important thing on this line is if we have this two similar lines they act the same and they have the same slope but different positions we call this as parallel lines or we say parallel lines so um, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope and I think I don't need to prove this out but you can also prove it through triangle the triangle uh, property okay. you can you can prove that through that triangle so <clears throat> that's parallel lines okay. another thing that is uh, important the perpendicular lines so if you're not familiar with the terms perpendicular is when you have the uh, the line okay when you have the line for example you have a line like this and you have a line like this and it's it's it has the uh, 90 degree so we can say two lines with slope let's say m1 and m2 are perpendicular if and on the if Or we can also write in terms of oh I forgot the negative sorry okay Okay, to prove this, actually we can we can prove, but I think I will skip this. I can I think you can check by your own. And let's say they are on the same x. So one, um, let's say m one. This is b one. M two. And we can have a Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. So we will have a Pythagorean. So we have a two triangle here. If you see this two triangle. And we could write the using the distance formula. Using um, 1 m1 and 1 m2. Finding the distance. Uh, 
so it means that uh, this distance okay the let's say this is o so distance o a so distance o a plus distance o b squared squared it should be equal to distance a b squared by fifth pythagorean so by pythagorean try by yourself okay try by yourself whether it's true or not okay so of course the how can we get the d the d can be the d is from here and here and here and here each of them okay. and then prove this and you will end up with this with this uh, relations between the slopes okay okay i think that is the uh, the lines okay that's all okay so chapter one we finish all the um the sections and i will go to um next chapter which is the, the function so uh, i believe we are a little bit delayed on schedule so i will make it a little bit faster for the, for the function so what is function okay function is basically a rule so this is actually a rule or some law or some policy okay so we can say that the functions is a rule uh to assign each element x in a set let's say some a exactly one element called the f of x in a set b Maybe let's change color like that. Okay. And usually, because we already learn on the fundamentals about numbers, we consider our function here, they are all set of real numbers. So we are going to have our universe as a real number. So we exclude the imaginary for a while, Okay, the complex one for a while. Now, the set A that is on this sentence here is called the domain. Domain of the function. We already learned about domain when we learned the equations before. But now we make sure that this is the same domain, but it's on the function. Okay, it's on the function. And set B. or maybe to be precise okay, to be precise the range let's say the range of a function is set of all uh, possibilities or possible value that's a bit more clear possible value of f of x as x varies through domain okay well i think we can think the function as some machine like for example here's the machine function we put some something there and there will be resulting some something there we put in the x and the result will be going to be function of x so basically function can be anything 
can be anything. It doesn't really limit it to functions, for example, the uh, like linear equations, quadratic, blah, blah, blah. We, we can design function, functions as, um, as possible as, as, as we want, right? And we can also describe because the functions has some element x in some set of a that will be going through um, assigning exactly one element in another another set we say set of b so let's say we are having a we are having b so let's say we have four element in A. Let's say we have only three element. Okay, now the policy or the rule say that we need to assign, so every element in A, this is the X, okay, the inputs. We need to set every element has one element in B. Of course, if we have this, and maybe if we have another point, it will get each one. But how about if we have, this is X, and it's go the same way here. Well, that's okay. That's okay. It's still okay. It's assigning each element X and getting each element of the set of B, the outputs. This is the function. The arrow is the functions, okay? But now, but now, if we have another, if we have another, let's say, set of A and B, okay, okay, now we start from here, and then goes here, okay, not a problem, and then goes here. Now, if I make another arrow from the same element, this becomes trouble. This becomes trouble because it means that every element, they assign to different set of B, which is not in our rule. It should be exactly one element. Okay. In, in our case here, the left, is all is one element. From here, go here. One, 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 and another one. Okay, each X has one arrow. The result can be the same, it's okay. But here, one X goes into two ways. It has branches. This is not a function. Okay, this is function for the left, the right one is not a function. Okay, next thing, I hope you're already familiar with equations, um, and then the equation itself can be made as uh, functions, okay? So for example, function that is, we can write based on what we have learned, we can write the quadratic one, like this one, and of course, the quadratic means that we can, we can um, easily draw, like linear also easy to be drawn. So let us draw here. So 
so this is um, x squared plus 1 or maybe I mean write completely x x squared plus 1 okay uh, to distinguish the function or not a function there is one way to uh, to cross check it's called the vertical line test okay so the vertical line we just take a drawing of a vertical line anywhere in the functions okay just to see that whenever the functions or the curve it's getting crossing by this line at least once or exactly once okay then it is a function okay it is a function but but if we have maybe functions not a function curve like this we might have a curve like this for example the, um, the square root of x for example let's say square root of x like that if we draw the vertical line here it's crossing these two points here, right, in the curve. So we can say this is not function. This is function. How to make this square root of x a function? We need to erase one part, okay? If we can erase, for example, drawing the functions, just a half of it, like this, then this is a function. So this is function. Because it's crossing only one one point. Okay, that's a simple way to 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 um, to determine whether the curve is a function or not a function. Okay. Okay. Now about domain. Now domain. Or domain of a function practically speaking is the domain of algebraic expression okay let me just write just this okay so basically when we learn before in equation we can have a domain and it will be also applicable on our function Okay, for example, if we, we define our functions of f, f of x is equal 1 over x minus 4, then we could write the domain of these functions as, let's say we usually write the domain, and the domain of a function here will be all x except, except at x equal 4. So we don't, we don't want to make the denominator become 0. Okay, so we are ex we have some exceptions that is x equal four. Okay, and let's say another functions. Okay, let's say the square root of x that we if we have visualized before. Since the square root is not defined, not defined for. Um, negative x so the domain need to be a positive or equal zero at least so we can write that this will be our domain okay now let me give you uh, some examples okay it's a simple example find the domain and this will be a very very typical question but you need to to to, to master um, the, this this kind of uh, uh, functions okay domain functions okay Let's start Okay, you can you can 
go on by yourself and check and later you can confirm with me domain of functions as follows Okay, we start with the uh, rational function fractions right we have we have a fractions and we have a quadratic equations of course we don't want this denominator cannot be zero right and since it's factorizable we can factorize and write as x, x minus 1. So we could say all possible x that makes 0 is not applicable here. So we can write down domain is as x, x not equal 0, and x not equal 1. Or you can write by interval if you want. This is just, just to say that it's it's applicable on all interval except at x equals zero and x equal one. So you write the whole interval from negative infinity to infinity, right? Okay, now we also have a quadratic equations, but it's inside the square root. So we need to remember what will happen inside here, what we want, what we want. The goal is to make that this is need to be greater or equal zero. So we need to write this inequality and we need to solve this. Okay. And we already learned an inequality before. So how do we do that? First, okay, first, if you're still confused on, on this, this sign, inequality sign, my, my suggestion is just take it as our equal, uh, equ just a normal equations. So we say that the x will be uh, plus minus 3, right? So then just, let's just draw our line number. Take negative 3 here take 3 okay put 0 0 is positive positive here take negative 4 negative 4 if put here negative will be positive in squared right so 9 minus 16 is of course it will be negative this is also the same and since we have to include 0 so we need to include this point also so this will be our interval because we need to have this positive okay so our interval or our domain becomes or if you want to write in a uh, different way we could also write there okay hope that easy easy to follow okay now we have a rational and we also have a have a square root okay we have rational we have a square root what do we do now what we can do is we need to combine both domains so we are going to have remember inside the square root you need to have at least equal zero or greater zero right but it's a it's a rational it's a rational so we are going to erase this equal so it's it, we cannot have this equal zero because of the rational one because it will be undefined when x equals zero so x plus one will be positive or a greater than zero so x should be greater than negative one or we could just directly write the interval of the domain as negative one until infinity. 
that's it.